Let's take a look at the different types of constraints. Let's start a new drawing with a blank template. Use the AutoCAD or the ACAD.DWT template. Really any template will probably do, but this is the one I'm going to use. I'm going to press F7 to turn off my grid, and I'm going to draw a box using the rectangle command. Just fill it right on your screen. It doesn't matter what size it is. So dimensional constraints are length-based, and they can be either lineal or they can be horizontal or vertical. So you're going to lock them in to being horizontal or vertical distances, or it's just going to be a point-to-point -point type of a dimension. So let's create this. Click on the parametric tab, dimensional panel on the ribbon. Click this little flyout arrow and just click linear. And we're going to pick this point. As you move your mouse, the cursor will move and it will highlight a little red spot here. These are the snap points that you can define the distance to. So when you get that cursor just close to that spot where you want, that'll show up so you can left click on it. And then you do the same for your second point and it creates that dimension. So left click, left click again. And so we've locked this line, this endpoint and this endpoint to this distance. As I change the geometry of this box, if I click on here and try to do a grip edit, you can see that distance isn't going to change, even when it should. This should be a stretch because this endpoint and this endpoint are locked in to being this distance. That distance isn't going to change. I can't move it out. I can't move it in. I can really only move it up or down. And that angle is going to change accordingly to keep that distance. So it locks that in. In the same way, I can apply a vertical distance from here to here. I can't change that distance either. So it locks it in. The dimensional constraints will lock in lengths. Angular parameters will define angles, of course. So if I click on this option here for the angular, click here and here, left click again. If I try to move this, it holds that angle and it keeps all the other parameters locked in. I can't change this dimension, this dimension, or this angle. Now, geometric constraints define the geometric relationship between objects, whereas the dimensional parameters assign values. So there are 12 basic geometric constraints available to you, and you can find them right here. So here we have a coincident, and that keeps two points connected anywhere. So if I have a line and another line, I can apply this coincident. I just left click on it. And again, I move my mouse to move the cursor until I get that point that I find and that I want. And it locks it in. And you can see that little glyph right there. That is our constraint. And when I hover over it, it gives me the full information. And that tells me it's a coincident. So if I have a rectangle, I can apply the parallel constraint. Select one line, and then I select the other line that's parallel to it. Now, as I try to change these, you can see, no matter what I do, these two lines remain parallel. Doesn't matter how short or how long they are or where I change them, they will always be parallel. Doesn't care what the distance is, it just cares about their relationship. So the geometric constraints are about relationships or spatial relationships specifically, and dimensional constraints refer to values or lengths. So our geometrics that we have are coincident, collinear, concentric, fixed, parallel, perpendicular, horizontal, vertical, tangent, smooth, symmetric, or equal.